Hello. Um, hopefully, if you clicked this video, it's not because you clicked out of order, and it's because you enjoyed the first video. Um, if you did not, let me explain again. Uh, I am Alex Floyd. I am a cybersecurity instructor where I teach labs to my local college that uh, focuses on ITIM and cybersecurity. Now, in the last lab, what we did is we created a remote access Trojan. And we use this to gain persistence to a victim's computer. And basically, we did all sorts of things. We did some key logging. Uh, we looked around the registry. I showed you where we could um, establish logon scripts and multiple other very malicious things. In this lab, what we're actually going to focus on is getting around antiviruses. And we're going to do that by using a tool called Sways Cryptor. Now, in today's time, uh, numerous antivirus software programs have been configured to detect malware such as Trojan, viruses, worms, etc. And although security specialists keep updating the virus definitions, hackers continually try to evade or bypass them. And one method the attackers use to bypass AVs is to encrypt the malicious files using a fully undetectable cryptor, or FUD. FUD. Uh, encrypting these files allows them to achieve their objective and thereby take complete control over the victim machines. Now, Sway's Cryptor is a software that encrypts the original binary code of the executable in order to hide the virus, spyware, keylogger, remote access trojan, among other things, and any kind of file to make them undetectable by antiviruses. So, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to navigate to virus total and in the last video we made this test.exe file so if you notice I've actually performed this scan before so it, it did it fairly quickly but when I look here there's actually 12 antiviruses that didn't pick this up and so if we scroll down here and you are using any of these antiviruses either at home or in your company, I recommend considering an upgrade almost immediately. Um, luckily, when we look through here, most uh, big antiviruses in MSoft, one of my favorite companies out there, uh, are going to be able to not only detect this, but they would completely block it. If you tried to run this, you would just get a notification that says Windows has blocked this from running because it's malicious and contains a virus. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to get around this. And to do that, I'm actually just going to come down here. I'm going to navigate to Sway's Cryptor, and I'm going to open it. This is a pretty easy software to use. It does, definitely does not take a genius um, to be able to run this. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the ellipses right here. I'm going to go to my desktop and choose my executable. And after that, I'm going to choose its startup. I'm gonna choose Mutex, and I'm going to disable the user um, account control, which is just gonna make sure that there's no pop-up that says, are you sure you wanna run this? After that, we can encrypt, and I'm going to save it to my desktop as crypted file. And so that's as easy as it is, people. Um, at this moment, we Technically, by all sense of the word, have an encrypted binary executable that is holding our remote access Trojan. So after that, we can actually go ahead and just close this. Uh, we'll minimize here. And we will click to upload a new file. So what we need to remember is that 56 programs detected the raw file. So let's confirm this upload. And let's see what type of score we get at this point. And while this is running, as always, if you are interested in this type of content, um, I'm not looking for likes. I'm not worried if you share this. 
Um, but what I would recommend is that you check out the CEH V11 uh, Practical Labs. I am not sponsored or paid in any type of way to, uh, to recommend them. However, this is where I'm getting this virtual machine from, and it is where I've compiled all of these lessons from. So back to the lab. You'll notice that only 40 security vendors flag this as a malicious file. So now when we look down here, we have a ton of different things. Luckily, um, looking through here quickly, it doesn't look like any antiviruses that I would ever recommend anyone install actually missed it. With that being said, this is a well-known virus. Uh, NJRAT has been around for a long time. It's nothing new, and it's something that any antivirus should have a hash of and should be able to block and mark as malicious. So, what we're going to do now is we are actually going to go back and we're going to kind of perform the same steps as we did in lab one, where we go to Trojan, we go to our rats, and we go to NJ rat, and our executable. We are going to leave it as the default port. As discussed in the last video, we could change the port to whatever we wanted to. It won't change the functionality as much, but if you are trying to send this through a firewall that's extremely tightened and has been told to only listen and accept packets that are over a specific port, i.e. maybe it's a web server or maybe it is fully functioning on a SQL server, we could change the port and try to get through it in those types of senses. So I'll pull this up. I'll even maximize it. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for you at home to view. So what we're going to do now is we are actually going to upload our encrypted file. So to do that, we're going to follow the same steps as last time. Uh, we are going to pretend that we've already established some type of persistence to the other machine, and we are going to paste inside of this mapped folder. So after doing so, we should be able to go to server 2016. There's no good way to hit Control-Alt-Delete on here without uh, actually executing it on my home machine. I'll even show you my password and make sure I typed that in right. <laughs> and I still messed up. That's fine. Um, by the way, if you think you're going to hack me by using the password as uh, my local machine's password, well, I promise you, you will not. Um, and we can have a little bit of a battle if uh, that's what you're interested in. Maybe I could even make that into a video. Um, a user at home attacked me <laughs> and, and I installed a remote access Trojan on their machine. Um, obviously I'm kidding, but uh, it is a big thing in the world of cybersecurity. Don't ever attack someone on the public internet and don't ever attack an industry unless you have full verbal and written permission. Um, I am teaching you this to be an ethical hacker, um, to be either a purple or red team member, or if you're a blue team member, this is stuff you need to know in order to actually um, tighten and harden your machines. Um, at the end of the day, the easiest and most vulnerable space in cybersecurity is going to be the end user. So you can tighten your machine up as much as you want and your network as much as you want. But if your end users don't understand the implementation implications of what clicking on a random file could do, um, I could get in your network. And hopefully these videos show you that. So now that we're inside of our um, 2016, we will click on this cryptid file. So uh, the first thing we notice, we get this pop-up in the bottom right corner that says you must restart your computer to turn off UAC. So 
what we'll do, we'll click here and we'll say restart now. I'm actually going to pause the video. I have learned my lesson from the last video that users probably don't want to watch three minutes of server 2016 loading back up. So we will see you in just a moment. Okay, and welcome back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to log in. Now you may be thinking to yourself, okay, so you had a pop-up though that informed the user that they had to restart their machine. Yes. How many of you out there have had anything on your computer that said you need to restart your machine and blindly activated it? If you're not raising your hand, then I just don't believe you. Um, you must be the type of person that reads your Apple and Android agreements to the T, but that is not me. If I see you need to restart your computer and it's a Windows notification, I basically just click on it. I mean, I'm, I'm no superhero. So what we've done now is we have clicked on our encrypted um, remote access Trojan, and it's going to work in basically the exact same way as the last video. So if I get out of this and I actually bring up my NJ wrap, you'll notice that we again have established persistence. Now I'm not going to do much in this um, sense because in the last video uh, we looked at going to manager and exploring the registry, exploring file explorer, we looked at running remote execution against them, um, not so much from here but from manager. Um, I did tell you, you can come in here, you can run from a disk or from a link, and of course we can just type in a script. Uh, we did some remote desktop. Uh, again, I do not have a camera. You don't want to see my ugly face anyways. We've looked at a keylogger, we've looked at chat. Open folder is nothing crazy, but what 